All right. Let's see. I want to make sure the video is up and running real quick. We're going to be looking at a video from Kevin Pathrath that was produced at about, I don't know, 2 o'clock in the morning. Closer to 3. I just want to make sure that I actually am up and running first. Can't quite tell from the YouTube settings. Might have to clip some of this out later. Let me see, let me see. Why is there a lag if it is running? I don't see a chat. Ah, hey, there we go. We got somebody. All right, cool. I know I'm working. All right, so we're going to go ahead and fire this off here. We're going to watch a video from me, Kevin. And I'm going to talk to a couple of his points and then talk to his state of mind um, as he made this video in the early hours of the day. So here we go. Let's let's get going here. I'm gonna we're gonna listen to Kevin for a second. First of all, Tesla went absolutely ape shit, and then ham. Like what? We were down six percent after being only down thirty three basis points. So we went from thirty three basis points to down six percent to down three percent to up four percent in the after hours. What? Yeah, part of that has to do with Elon Musk suggesting that now on August 8th, we are going to introduce RoboTaxi. So we need to digest all of this piece by piece. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to share this tweet. So I sent a tweet and I mentioned this. I said, I started on social media full time seven years ago. Two things have always been true. Number one. I've always loved Lauren more and more every single day. And number two, no matter what, I will always tell you how I feel, even if that's not. All right, so real quick, I don't know about you guys, but there's two types of drunks, right? There's the lovers and the fighters. I'm one of the lover categories. I, th I think me, Kevin is too, He's he, because <laughs> I'll tell my wife I love her. I'll tell my friends I love them. Um, so this is just a sign that this man is not in a state to make a video. I actually think some of the upcoming comments that he has are legitimate. I get the stress of social media, having a tiny little following. I still get that there's people that will hate on you every single day. I get that. I get the stress that can come from it. He's got almost 2 million followers on, or subscribers on YouTube. And that can be rough, man. I, I can understand how that's a problem. But you shouldn't let you shouldn't let your emotional state dictate your investment strategy. And I have a problem with Meet Kevin because, I mean, Tesla, around the time I was watching Meet Kevin, I really liked him. I liked him. I still like him. He's probably a good person. He's got a lot of stress, just had twins um, with medical issues. He's got a lot going on. So I don't want to shit on him from that regard. But it's important to not do stuff like this. He's destroying his image and and it just doesn't, it's gonna make it to where he's not trustworthy. You're gonna see something in a little bit here. He actually talks about how he's not intoxicated. Well, he doesn't say that, but he says that he ate carrots and that he might have an allergic reaction to them at almost three in the morning. I don't know about you, I don't eat carrots at three in the morning. And, uh, and, and it just makes it to where you, I, I find a hard personally, how can I trust somebody that is willing to lie to me on air about being intoxicated? I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let's go a little bit further here. Let's go a little bit further. Not the popular opinion and I'll never stop. See when AMC was ripping, I had a problem with the APE shares. And I was really honest with my opinion. And a lot of people were very upset about my opinion. And they just chose to not follow me anymore because they thought I was anti their movement. When the reality was I was reading through the bullshit and trying to be honest. When during COVID, I was honest about my concerns about certain programs versus others. People thought that I was trying to hurt them, but the reality was I was trying to help. And the same has been true of stocks that we've talked about on the channel. 
I've been optimistic about Peloton, but then I said when Peloton was $113, oh my God, they're having to drop prices. It's I just want to say the, the guy did get a lot of stuff right. He kind of, and he does flip flop. I do that too. I go back and forth on my thesis. Um, but I think one of the big problems here is that you shouldn't, if you, if you change your mind and let's just say your position, your investment strategy, you shouldn't automatically take the exact opposite stance on everything, on everything. And you shouldn't, he's going to talk about all of his successes here. You shouldn't take 100% credit if you had multiple stances on the same thing, right? Like I can't say that I've had a perfect record on my view of like Mara. I don't know. That could still be a good investment. They have a huge Bitcoin stack, right? That could actually be something that makes people a lot of money. And I flip flop back and forth on what I believe and how I invest, right? But at the same time, the second I switch from an investment, I try to still be unbiased. I try to say, yeah, you know what? They might do all right, but I don't like it for this reason. And, you know, they do have this. They have a huge stack so that if if they don't execute well, they can still do really well financially. And maybe people make a lot of money. I actually think people can make a lot of money from a lot of the miners, but maybe 40% of them don't make it or get acquired, which is why I wouldn't be in options. But again, here's the problem I have. Kevin probably made 30x off of Tesla in his investment over the period of like late 2018 to 2020. Um, that's roughly what I made on, on a portion of mine. I sold too early. I don't know if he did, but he made tons of money off of it. And it seems like as of late, he's completely reversed. Yeah, carrots at 3 a.m. What the fuck? Um, he's completely reversed his stance on Tesla. And in this video, he actually says that the robo taxi is a negative towards their valuation and tries to justify that. At the end, he also says that he is currently not shorting the stock. He doesn't clarify whether or not he was short on Friday. There's just a bunch of stuff here that doesn't add up. And again, lying to us on camera, which I believe he's doing. I could be wrong. I know. I think Ross Gerber probably directs a lot of his thought, our thesis too, because they used to both be huge Tesla bros. And now he still says he's a Tesla bro, but he thinks the next two or three years are going to be really rough. And he blames Elon for what's happening with the company. But it's just, it's, it's outrageous. I don't, I don't get it. He needs to take a break from social media. Let's listen to a little bit more here. Oh, and also I wanted to post this because I'm pretty sure he's going to take it down when he sobers up this morning or, or his carrot allergy goes away. It's time to sell. Boy, that sounds eerily similar. Or, oh my gosh, shift might go bankrupt. It's time to sell at $9. Oh my gosh, FTX is about to go bankrupt. We all need to go get out. And people are like, no, 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 everything's fine. Sam Bankman. To be clear, I think this motherfucker got paid from FTX, just like Jeremy Lafarve and just like a bunch of other people that he was friends with at the time. I'm pretty sure he got paid or got some stock or something or at least purchased from them. I'm, I, 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 I believe I saw promotions from it. If you guys know that for sure, throw it in the chat. So again, just acting like he knew with 100% assurity that they were going to fail. Yeah, he did. He did actually make a statement, and I can vouch for that, that he thought a lot of these companies were going to fail. And then when they started to succeed, he, he, uh, he started profiting from it. Free it said everything's fine. And I'm like, dude, get out It is, um, it's very difficult to be on social media because it is. you have two choices. It's true. You could be a transitory social media agent. And that's somebody who comes on and usually the way that works is they regurgitate uh, whatever is popular. Hey, real quick, when he's getting ready to finish his thought, that's not a very flattering look. Um, can you guys tell me, is the audio okay right now? Is it still is it still all right? I'm trying to make sure I don't get reverb in here. Just let me know. And if the audio is okay on the video playback. So you go on sort of social media, you go, oh, that's the sentiment. Oh, that's what people are playing with. Oh, that's what Yeah, they what got paid. Yeah, thanks, okay. Adrian. And then they take the most popular likes or most liked posts or most One liked videos. Here. 
and they regurgitate the top five most popular arguments. Oh yeah, well, BYD went down 40%, so Tesla's fine. It's nothing to do with the problems Tesla is facing, and it's embarrassing when you compare it to Hyundai, Nissan, Toyota, GM, Ford. But oh my gosh, that would require data analysis, which maybe we've posted all of that already on ehack.com, but whatever. So the challenge on social media is if you want to just do what's popular, that's easy. You can just read what's popular, regurgitate that, and then congratulations, everybody likes you. <sighs> oh, sorry, one sec. One of the things I found. <laughs> sorry, still trying to work with my back. So I do want to be clear. I actually agree with him that it's much easier to go with the flow on social media and just say what everybody else is saying. That is 100% true. Um, it's harder to take an opposing view on something. It's more what I'm concerned about in this video is that he had just kind of a semi meltdown yesterday. He was very happy to report the Reuters article. He seemed giddy. Um, he didn't back up or validate any of it. And instead of being apologetic about the Reuters article and the fact that it was inaccurate and Elon claimed that it was false and they were lying about it, he tried to change his narrative to justify why he was probably still right and why Elon needed to say a bunch more to clarify that that the Model 2 was still coming out. And it seemed like his narrative changed throughout the day, not, not trying to find the facts so much, but really trying to fit his preconception of what should, should the narrative be right now. What do, what do I believe it should be, not what is the truth? And I struggle with that. Again, this is the same man that in a minute here is going to talk about how he's been eating carrots. And you be the judge of that. At three um, in the morning. Uh, that's very hard about social media is expressing what you believe when you're early. I feel bad like for him. He looks really early upset. on discussing COVID stimulus. It's sad. Or when I was early on warning about FTX. Or when I was early about warning about Peloton or Shift. Or when I was early about warning about Tattoo Chef or when I was early about warning about SPACs, and when I was early about saying you should get into cash above and all, above anything else, and when I was early about saying stay away from bonds because they're about to tank, or stocks because they're about to tank. Nobody wants to hear that. To be clear, he did, he was right about a number of these things. His timing isn't always right, and the way he's representing them probably isn't fully accurate. But there's a lot of things Kevin got right, and he's new to investing. You have to remember this, right? This guy hasn't been doing this for 20 or 30 years. He just started a few years ago around the pandemic. And before that, he was in real estate, something he was brilliant at. And now he's learning about investing. And again, he's had, I'd say, more hits than misses. Um, but he's new to this. And so he's changing his mind a lot more than I think people with conviction would or that have been doing this for a long time or that invest with a longer term strategy. Uh, me, again, with Mara, I've been a flip flopper and a few other things I've been a flip flopper, right? I find out new information. I realize I don't know enough. I jump. Um, and, and so that, that's going to happen. That can happen to anybody, anybody who does this, that can happen to. But I think when you change your thesis, like three or four year thesis on a company and say, oh yeah, I think it's going to do great in the future, but it's going to be horrible now because of this robo taxi announcement and 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 literally try and change the narrative for what happened the day before you're being disingenuous and when you tell me in this video that you're you only had carrots that's bullshit and this video will be gone later today i have no doubt about it he just me kevin was great 2 or 3 years ago when the guy you had on the screen was who you thought he was somebody who was real you thought he was going to tell you the truth you thought he was going to be honest with you like a good friend would be. And I don't get that impression anymore. And if I look at this guy's views, they've dropped substantially. And so again, me, Kevin, I don't think you'll ever watch this. But if I can give you any advice, be a genuine fucking person. You have a beautiful wife, beautiful children. Maybe spend some fucking time with them and get off this shit. 
and figure out what you want to do going forward. And don't just post clickbait. Don't try and create drama in order to be able to increase viewer count because I feel like that's what's happening. And you don't want to live your life that way. Your integrity should be your driver. You're just a flip-flopper. But the reality is we should not be in a position where we're so worried about what's wrong or right. We should be worried about what's the best thing to do now going forward. See, that's very different. Wrong or right is hindsight analysis. What to do now is going forward. And so that's where we have to talk about Tesla. All f uh, well, also at the same time, we should just briefly mention that you know, there were some comments today where people are like, oh, you should talk about your losses as well as your gains. Yeah, I had a $17,000 gain on a trade today. That was great. But I did also have uh, some other gains and losses. I had a $1,000 gain, a $17,000 gain, and a $1,400 loss. So technically, I'm only up 16 cents. I'm going to jump a little further in now, this video. I mention that. So many wonderful things going for it. But I just want to be clear. I, I Like... It's, it, it is rude for me to be here and then you make that accusation. And this is the second time now I'm asking you to please be respectful. I'm being very respectful. I, I, I will be respectful, Kevin. And I appreciate you. Hyperbulls, I can see no wrong. So to be it clear, he posted his them. version of the story on that, the segment that made him look best, I, uh, not the I'm, full I'm thing. I'm not as optimistic as they are. I, uh, I do not think that full self-driving vehicles as robo-taxis are worth $1 per mile. I actually agree with that. I'm sorry, Brett. I think that's wrong from I Ark. don't think they are either. I respect you. I like you. I'm sorry, Tasha from Ark. I'm sorry, everybody else who thinks you're going to make a dollar per mile submitting your car to a robo-taxi fleet. I think that is delusional. Yeah, I, I, I actually would agree with that. I mean, maybe you make... 25 30 cents a mile it just all depends uh but it doesn't it doesn't really matter that like this doesn't matter much for the valuation of tesla's company um i don't really care i think it is straight up delusional to think that you are going to have bought a tesla and you are going to somehow turn your tesla into one hundred thousand dollars past because you gotta you gotta remember too tesla will be making money off of this and maybe it's 50 cents maybe it's 50 cents a mile i don't know i haven't crunched the math enough but tesla will be making a portion of that too right because they provide the infrastructure it's like youtube right now i make some money off of youtube because of subscriptions and viewer count um youtube takes like at least a third of that maybe it's more i don't even know and then there's taxes involved too so like you'll get a smaller portion of what that pie would be. And so I think 30 cents, I don't know, that feels more right as a number. So he's probably right on this comment. Annually. That is what I heard people talk about today. And I think it is straight up delusional. <laughs> now, I understand the hopium. The hopium is that we'll be able to take out our phones and go, wow, we all have uh, self-driving vehicles. Should be easy. Just submit them to the fleet. No. No. Because when and if that happens, trust me, in every single locale, you'll have 100 Teslas looking for about one person willing to ride. The demand for robo-taxis compared to the demand for Uber and Lyft will not be one-to-one. -one. The demand for robo-taxis will only rise when the price collapses. And then... All right, I actually kind of disagree with this. So the demand for robo-taxis will be slow in the beginning, um, especially in areas where it's new. And it'll go out to, you know, locations where they've gotten, like, local approval from the city, maybe the state, right? And and obviously, you know, the NHTSA is they're, they're going to be involved in making sure that this rollout is slow enough and that people aren't getting injured and Tesla won't want people to get injured. So it'll be slow initially in the beginning and it will be Tesla driven. It probably won't be individual people that are, that are running fleets. Um, I can 100% agree with that, but it, it will be a lower cost basis because the infrastructure and the cost will be lower insurance, maybe a little bit in the beginning. So maybe it's a little, just a hair lower than Uber or Lyft, 
But within a year or two, it would be substantially lower than Uber and Lyft. And those companies will literally die. They will turn into fucking Redbox. And they will go away. And people won't even remember what, what they were. Okay? They will just go away. Because if you have a, a taxi that can drive itself around town, that will be, you remove the human driver and you remove a massive portion of the expense. Massive. And Uber and Lyft will collapse and go bankrupt. And then the demand for robo-taxis will exist at probably cents per mile. No. Now, I'm not 30. saying if you drive five miles, you're only going to pay five cents. There'll be some base fee, some minimum fee. But you also have to... So I want to be clear here. I disagree with him. I think he's, he's, he's confusing a few different subjects. I think in major cities... In major cities, Tesla will probably be running a decent amount of the fleet or have a bigger portion in it and maybe allow only so many people onto the network. And it'll be like, I don't know, reputation based. There'll be some I don't think there'll be as many in big cities because you don't want to flood the market with with vehicles and make it to where nobody's able to make a profit. They'll have to manage how many they allow. And it'll be kind of a first come, first serve thing. Um, whether it's them running them directly or whether it's individuals that get to join access, it'll be like, okay, if you're a beta, you'll be in there first and you'll kind of be guaranteed a spot. But if you're a latecomer, you, you might have to request to get on the network and you might not be able to get on for a very long time because they're not going to destroy their own market share, especially when they're getting rid of Uber and Lyft, right? They're going to make it to where there's an economy there that still benefits the people financially that are participating in the network. In areas where there might not be a lot of Teslas, you'll be able to make some money. But this is just like like uh, Bitcoin miner or video card miners with the Ethereum back in 2017 when I was doing it. It was really great and you were getting paid a bunch in the beginning. But then there was a flood of people coming into the market and then you couldn't make any more money off of it. And they're going to work to control that. They would be insane not to because they'll be the only company that really has this technology in the beginning. And so they're going to be able to control how many people are, are in the network and, and, and kind of what their revenues are and what the cost is. They won't let it go down to pennies to where there's no economy for anybody to do it. That just won't be what happens. That will probably eventually get there. But in the beginning, they're going to make sure it's profitable for them and for the people running the service so that they do it. To offset the charging depreciation, vehicle investment, so the ROI for the investor in the vehicle. And good morning, guys. <laughs> and unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be the vehicle that you own. I think the Model uh, 2 RoboTaxi is actually going to be a very niche product that only works for RoboTaxi. So, ironically, I think... I completely fucking disagree. That is the stupidest fucking take I've ever heard. Now, don't get me wrong. Model 2s might be some of the main robo-taxis out there. I don't know. I think, I personally think, like when I look at Uber or Lyft, like you have like Uber X and this kind of shit. There's some people that need the Cybertruck or, or a Model X, right? They've got a bunch of shit. They've got a few people, right? You don't just have one size of fucking Uber or Lyft, you have a multitude of them. So for individual passengers, the Model 2 is going to be great, right? It's probably going to be the cheapest option, the lowest lowest cost, get you there quick. It's good. I'm sure it's going to be safe and all the other stuff that Tesla vehicles are. But if you want some luxury, you're probably going to go for a nicer end model. And all of these vehicles will have this ability. So it's a fucking stupid take, in my opinion, to act like the Model 2 will only be the robo-taxi network. Now, again, they're probably going to have a robo-taxi that's like a van-like thing for inner-city metropolis type stuff, but all the vehicles are being designed and marketed for years to do this. Years. Half a decade, if not closer to a decade by now. So, no, they're not going to do that. It would literally... They would piss off everybody who's already bought a vehicle from them 
And it doesn't make any sense. It's not rational to think that the only vehicle will be the Model 2. Hi, like, hey, I, I need an Uber. Uh, there's five of us. Um, can we cram in this fucking two-seater? Stupid. I think it's the alcohol speaking. That Reuters was right. See, Reuters suggested that they spoke with insiders, multiple insiders, and found that the $25,000 vehicle was dead. And, you know, this led a lot of people to say that uh, Reuters is a fraud and they're a lie. Well, Reuters alleged that one source said that Elon's directive was to go all in on robotaxis and to cancel the $25,000 vehicle. And see, this is very interesting because if you look at... Anonymous sources with an article that was written from somebody out of Detroit. And there was huge short interest that was accumulated right before the fucking article published. So it's got to be true, right? By the way, um, you won't see me, Kevin, talk about those things. Elon Musk's history. All you have to do is look at his book. I have it. Right at here. least he doesn't fall off the stage trying to get the book. That's good. Uh, got some jeans on. Whatever. It's right here. It's right here. I have it. It's oh, he's got studio. a book. Fucking great. So do I. And I'm going to read you a section I clipped from it. <sighs> For years... They had talked about what should be Tesla's next generation offering. A small, inexpensive, mass market car selling for around $25,000. Sorry, by the way, if I sound a little lispy, I had carrots. I, we buy raw carrots and I'm actually highly allergic to raw carrots. So my throat gets itchy and my voice sounds different and my lips kind of swell up. From fucking I carrots. Anyway, though. Uh, I don't think I'm in a flat. It was some. It was some late night carrot eating that caused him to be like this. And I think in this video again, he posts about how he loves his wife again. Again, it's not like I haven't drank a little, a few too many before. And I definitely tell my wife I love her about a million times because I've, I've been a dipshit, and I'm I'm the lover, not the fighter type too. So I get it. But why do this? Why post this video in the middle of the night? I understand you had a bad fucking day. But why post this? And then why lie to everybody that's fucking watched this thing? Telling them that you had carrots. And again, this is my own valuation of what occurred. You, you, you decide for yourself. Black Nick uh, having my, my throat close up all the way at least. But anyway, Musk himself has teased the possibility in 2020... But then he put a hold on those plans. And over the next two years, he repeatedly vetoed the idea, saying that the robotaxi would make the other car unnecessary. The robotaxi would make the 25K car unnecessary. Hmm. Interesting. Nevertheless, others had quietly kept it alive as a shadow project. Hmm. Interesting. So maybe the $25,000 car we were told was coming with $10,000 of, I'm sorry, 10,000 volume units of production per year. I'm sorry. No, that's per week, I believe. I believe that was. Jesus Christ. So he, what he's saying here is that Elon is lying to us and that the $25,000 car has in fact been canceled or is the robo taxi now. I'm not even sure what try, kind of fucking messages he's, he's trying to compete or complete right now. I'm not, I can't tell. I can't even tell. You tell me. It was 10,000 units per week. Uh, per week starting at the end of 2025 was frankly just clickbait. Because Ever clear they never so actually carrots. thought about making yes. a $25,000 vehicle that you could buy. They thought about making a $25,000 vehicle that Tesla could license as a robotaxi. Well, shit. I can't believe he used vulgar, vulgar language. What kind of YouTuber does that? No, I'm kidding. Um, but here's the thing, right? How can you trust him? How can you trust this motherfucker who, who literally recorded himself getting a DWI like a year plus ago and acted like a dick to the cop in that video, by the way, and now who's obviously, in my opinion, 
as somebody who doesn't want to get sued, has been drinking carrots and is slurring and who doesn't appear to be coherent. Kevin is a very smart person. There's there's no doubt of that, right? He's very quick, very fast. Does he seem that way right now? That's a little different. Now, why is that different? Well, <sighs> let's say you don't think RoboTaxi is going to be a reality until 2030. Well, I could sell you a Tesla $25,000 car in 2025 or 2026, but I can't sell you a RoboTaxi until probably 2030, which means I'm going to have to delay my earnings per share estimates for Tesla, which means this is actually a net negative to Tesla in the near term, near to medium term. Yeah. So the RoboTaxi announcements from yesterday is a negative for the valuation of Tesla over the short to midterm. Interesting. Now, a lot of people get mad about that. And they say, well, you should be a long-term investor. What do you mean you care about 2026 EPS estimates? Oh my gosh. All right, fine. So let's assume the robo-taxi fleet is here and Tesla is the only one who's going to produce it. My prediction, by the way, is that Tesla is going to release a localized robo-taxi option that's going to be very similar to Zook's and it's going to operate in areas like San Francisco and Vegas. And it's going to end up looking like Zooks, which is Amazon owned. And it'll be a localized robo taxi. It'll work. And the odds are it'll be able to expand to new cities substantially faster than other vehicles. But it's still going to be a niche product for quite a while. Here's Zooks. It exists. So now he's comparing it to a company that is unsuccessful and who can't make a profit and who has virtually no scale whatsoever and arguably nothing close to the full self-driving software, especially beta 12.33. So we're just going to make arbitrary comparisons to companies who aren't even remotely as good as Tesla and then just say, well, that's a similar experience to what Tesla will have. That that makes tons of sense, right? Fuck yeah. It exists today. It's allowed to go on prototype drives of up to 35 miles per hour. It does it drive on highways? I pity him too, Dustin. Get off. He does need help. He needs to Highway take a Highway off-ramps? Does it change, change lanes on highways? No. No, it doesn't. So, unfortunately, I think there's a... All right, real quick, somebody in the comments was is making well. a few comments here. Daily News. The announcement because of a robo-taxi, in my opinion, means FSD that no vehicle... Oh, wait. Every Sorry. FSD... I got to get used to the Mac. You got to click on the screen. So, all right. So, the announcement of a robo-taxi, in my opinion, means that no vehicles in the current fleet are going to be robo-taxi capable. That means they're not seeing a robo-taxi scale until 2027, at least. Daily News. Hey, man. Full respect. Do you know shit about Tesla? I just want to be clear here. Do you have a Tesla? Do you have FSD 12.33? Because I use it basically every day now for all of my driving. So I'm sorry. I completely disagree with that. It's version hardware 3, and I love it. It's great. So I've, I've got this feeling that maybe you don't have that and might not know what you're talking about with it. I'm just going to throw that out there. The driver knows that. There is not a single FSD driver who says the vehicle is perfect for full self-driving, level five autonomy. Now, I understand. People say, well, Kevin, don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. That's fine. I agree. FSD is much safer than a human driver. 110% agree. But even though you're safer than a human driver, doesn't mean you're going to get robo-taxi approval on a broad-based level to where every operator can be you. The first operators for robo-taxis will always be the corporations. It will always be the Amazon, the Google, the GM, and the Tesla. It's not going to be you. I actually don't know if that's true. Um, it probably will be like, again, 
I mean, it's not true. It's not true, right? Let's just think about this real quick. Who are the drivers of full self-driving beta right now? Is it Tesla? Would you call it Tesla? Or would you call it me? And hundreds of thousands of other people that are signed up for it. Soon to be millions of people that are signed up for it. It's them, right? And then the people that show that they're, they're, they're good with it and that they can monitor it and that it's doing well, they're going to be in these cars until there's a time in each jurisdiction that they'll let the car drive on its own. And that will be deployed jurisdiction by jurisdiction. But it won't be Tesla doing it. They don't need to. They have a fleet of people like me that will make that happen. This is just not accurate. It's not remotely accurate. The next operators will be those who are willing to pay for extremely expensive licenses and oversight procedures that require a very strict maintenance of their vehicle fleet, which the vast majority of individual owners will not be willing to partake in. Just look up, for example, flight operators. Okay? There's something called a Part 135 operator versus a Part 91 operator. If you know, you know. Let's just say if you're a 91 operator, you don't want to be a 135. And if you're a 135, you paid enough money to the regulators to, your, to where you're like, please, let me fly other people in my jet for money. Good luck paying those fees. In other words, bottom line, I think that the Tesla Robotech. All right, real quick. So now he's comparing the autopilot network to the most heavily regulated network or, or network of, of flight in, like in the world. We, we, we spent so much time trying to make sure that planes that can fly hundreds of people at a time don't crash to the ground, right? So do you think, and then that's, that's, that's a combination of human and computer intervention, but do you think the liability concerns between like a couple of passengers and maybe like 300 are the same? Taxi is unfortunately a downgrade. This is painful to say. This is very painful to say. It's not painful. Huh. Because so the robo taxi is a downgrade. Really optimistic about this, they think that Reuters is uh, wrong because Elon said they lied. So obviously uh, that means they lied about everything. Wrong. I actually think Reuters and Elon are right. Now, how is that possible? It's actually quite simple. It's actually very simple. Elon Musk will not produce a $25,000 vehicle. Retail will never buy a $25,000 Tesla unless it's some used Tesla or a massively subsidized government Tesla. No. Instead, robotaxis will be operated by Tesla. So, it is a lie that the $25,000 car is dead because... Tesla is going to use the $25,000 car. But for you, the retail audience, it's true. It's a lie. Reuters lied to you. Everyone, please. Reuters is a scam because Reuters lied to you. Reuters told you that the $25,000 Tesla is canceled. And you know what? They're wrong. The $25,000 Tesla is canceled. But not for Tesla. <laughs> of course, as a Tesla shareholder, you're like, oh, I'm... That's okay. They'll make the money on the robotaxi. Right. Right. Yes. That's what we'll underwrite. We'll underwrite that every single Tesla will make $100,000 per year in passive income. It's delusional bullshit. No. No. If every Tesla owner could submit their car to the robotaxi network, I will guarantee you there's no way you will make $100,000 a year on one vehicle. There's no way. The price per mile will plummet because most of what you compensate a driver for today in Uber or Lyft is the labor, not the car. 
price will collapse. Hmm. Yeah. Again, they'll have the ability to, to control who comes on the network and they'll be destroying their competition. This isn't a bad thing. I don't know how he can even pretend that this is a bad thing. I just don't, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Oh, wait, I must have muted him. My desk. Do you know what this card is? It's how I started my career. Look at that. The no pressure agent, realtor Kevin Paffrath. You know what's on the other side? Don't, oh. Don't get biffed. Don't get biffed. You're being lied to if you think you're going to turn your car into a robo-taxi on August 8th. You're full of poopy doopy. You're being lied to. I think on August 8th, we're going to get a generic demonstration of none other than a product that already exists. A Zooks. That'll be Tesla's level five. Okay, we can do certain cities, great. Yes, we'll be able to scale faster than anybody else because we use vision versus the map LiDAR. I know, I agree. But will you own that vehicle? No. Tesla will actually use their fantastic new unboxed assembly line. They'll make 100 cars for themselves and you'll have 100 Tesla robo-taxis. So it'll be true, there'll be Tesla robo-taxis. Just like there are Waymos. So sad. But do I think you're gonna turn your Tesla into a robo-taxi on August 8th? You'd be delusional to think that. So. I'm sorry, who actually believes, out of you guys, maybe in the comments you can tell me, who believes that they're gonna turn our cars into robo taxis on the 8th of August. I don't. I know this could take years. I know this could take years, but to act like Elon has lied to everybody and that the only robo taxi that will be out there will be this robo taxi that they're coming up with and that other people won't be able to participate in this, maybe initially. Maybe initially these are deployed to regions where they focus on that. But again, I'm, I, I'm not going to make the assumption that Elon Musk has lied about everybody that has bought a Tesla vehicle not being able to use it as a robo taxi because I actually fucking have one and use it. And, and me, Kevin, it's funny. 12.3 is such, such a change from the previous version. The previous version, I tried to show it to people. I was proud of it, but then I didn't want to die because it would just do crazy shit because it used heuristics, which is basically if then statements for the majority of what it was going to do. And it didn't, it, the latency was too slow for it to be able to figure out what the fuck it was doing. It would go down one path and then it would just try and kill you. Okay. This version is like, I would say it's like an elderly driver. It knows what it needs to do. It might get confused a little bit and it's, it might be slow at times, but it, it gets it right. It gets it right. And it's not perfect, but they just deployed this to the majority of people weeks ago, weeks ago. And it's a massive step forward in the code. And I use it all the time. And I can see how this literally, probably with my hardware, can do full self-driving. It's not the cameras that are the problem. It's not the processing speed in the local machine that is the fucking problem. It's literally teaching the neural net how to be an advanced human being. It's AI. We're trying to build, build real-world fucking AI. And the car has tons of cameras. Tons. I think technically it has like eight. It's got like three forward facing. It's got two on the sidebar. 
It's got some down below, and it's got one in the rear. That's enough. That's enough. Now, maybe Hardware 4 gives you a little more precision, but what he's saying just isn't true. They might they might have some robo-taxis that they use in metro areas. I totally think that's normal, and I think that's right. I think the quotes from, from Elon's book might have been accurate years ago, too, but I think they're being taken out of context. And I'm sorry, I believe Elon fucking Musk over some drunk guy who's shitting on Tesla at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I actually like Kevin Pathrath, okay? I like him. I like the version of him from two years ago. And I would love to see Kevin, if you see this video, which I don't think you will, because I'm too small. But I would love to see you spend some fucking time with your newborn kids, Get your priorities straight. Focus on them and less on this shit. Less on too many things. Your investment thing that you're trying to get people into with ha house hack. Um, your private jet that you bought. Um, YouTube. Uh, trying to, like, all the, like, just limit it down, bro. Limit it down. Drop it and get it to where you can find stability in your own fucking life. And then, and then look at things with fresh eyes, not necessarily how you're invested. Okay. And, and don't, and don't, if, if you're, if you were drinking and then you're lying to people on air about drinking, how do we trust you for anything, for anything? How do you trust people that can so easily lie to you? Again, FTX, he was a fucking promoter of it, but on here, he's trying to make it look like he was a saint. And that he told everybody in advance, yeah, you did tell everybody in advance. I remember that. And I remember agreeing with you. And then you started promoting it. And then it went shit up. So let's get the timeline right. Let's not act like we're perfect, okay? None of us are. I'm definitely not. Am I short Tesla today? No. Were you yesterday? Am I trying to talk the stock down? No. Disrespect. All right. How much do you have in it? I tell you guys what I have, right? I got to fix my portfolio. Oh, by the way, I think I can do that this weekend um, for the portfolio allocation. Somebody told me that there's a Mac version of Excel too. And so I should theoretically, it's, I believe it's on the cloud, be able to export that template over and fix it. But, but I tell you, I tell you what I have for a fucking allocation. Can you tell me what he has right now? Can you tell me how long he is? Can you tell me if he sold 90% of his shares? Can you tell me if he was fucking short on Friday and if he closed that short? And why doesn't he volunteer that information if you're if you're trying to be transparent? Just curious, asking for a friend. Respectful people think that. It's okay. I'll let them think whatever they want. Just trying to be realistic. Elon Musk is uh, in a corner. He had to come out with an announcement today. So by saying that Reuters lied about the $25,000 car, he's right. There won't be a $25,000. So you told us here, I feel like... Yeah, so I, I, you guys be the judge on that video and whether or not you think, A, he's coherent, B, is making good choices, um, and whether or not he's intoxicated off of carrots. You guys, you guys, you guys let me know if it literally slowed down his speech and his ability to process information accurately because of his fucking carrots. But again, it's, oh yeah, somebody said, takes a lifetime to build a reputation and takes a minute to destroy it. That's very true. That's very true. Uh, you need to realize that when you take sponsors, when you say one thing, when you're doing another, when you aren't transparent, and when you're lying to people, on a video recording that your reputation will be damaged. And that's literally his brand. And there's so many things I agree with this guy on. It's fucking upsetting. He was right about advertising with Tesla. They should have been doing that a long time ago. And he was right about a lot of things. Right about a lot of things. But don't misrepresent your accuracy of rightness and your timing of it. Okay? You got to be genuine. You got to let people know that you make mistakes. It's fucking okay to make mistakes. And you can't go publishing videos at 3 a.m. in the morning after you've been drinking. Dude was smashed. Clearly slurring. I agree. 
That's my take. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys all decide. But, man, it's it's disappointing because this guy, he has everything he should want in life. He has a fucking jet. And yet you can see the pain. Incredibly visible. And, dude, I'm, I don't pray, man. I'm not even that religious of a person at all. But I'm praying for you, bro. I hope you get the help you need and that you take some fucking time off. Try and take a fucking vacation. Consolidate. If you're overextended financially, fix that shit. Sell that stupid fucking jet that you don't need. Quit trying to be a politician on YouTube and enjoy your goddamn life. Anyway, love you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off here. I got better things to talk about. But I just wanted to put this out there before it gets taken down. Um, don't listen to this, like his take on this. It isn't right. And it won't be right. Even though he's been right about other things, this won't be right. So don't waste your time trying to listen to him. Um, And I don't know. Again, hopefully he turns into the old Kevin. The one that would play a fucking video game on his stream. Because he liked them. And he had fun. Hopefully you turn into yourself again, dude. I hope you can find it. And I hope your family does well. And I hope your kids are doing good. And I hope they don't have to have any more medical procedures. And I'm rooting for you. So if, if I'm a hater... I'm I'm a hater who loves you a lot. So get better, dude. Bye, guys. Have a great morning. Enjoy your families. Enjoy your life. Money is not fucking everything.